Hello friends, greetings for the day. I am Dr. Nandini, a plastic surgeon doing mostly microvascular surgery and all other subspecialties of plastic. We are today going to deal with a very interesting and important topic that is relevant for you as surgeons and orthopedicians. A topic where uh, it is something that will add to your armamentorium of harvesting a graft and being able to do it and to know what are the indications to be doing it. So we'll start with grafts today. I'll just add a line to differentiate it from flaps and we'll be dealing with flaps in the next session. So primarily people tend to use both the words together graft and flap though both of them are extremely different. What separates graft from flap is the blood supply, right? So graft is whenever you move any tissue from one side in the body to another side without carrying its blood supply with it. So you're going to take a tissue, be it cartilage, be it bone, be it skin from one place to use it at another place. But you're not going to take its blood supply with it. Whatever blood supply the tissue itself has is only going to be there. It has to be fed by the recipient site. Flap whereas is a technique in which you take the tissue either attached to its blood supply by turning it around or if you are taking it to a distant site, you reconnect the blood vessel which is giving blood to the flap. That means the flap is tissue that is supplied by its own blood supply. For example, from the thigh, if you are taking a graft, you are taking a piece of skin, whatever be the thickness. If you are taking a flap, you are taking this piece of skin attached to its blood supply. Suppose we choose the lateral aspect, you are going to take it with branch of the lateral circumflex femoral artery and the vein, right? So we will be seeing more into the details. First, what are the tissues that can be grafted? So we will stick to the pure terminology of grafted because a lot has changed in terms of flaps and grafts. So the tissues that can be grafted are skin, fat, cartilage, bone, nail bed and composite means you are taking two things together. For example, if you take the skin and cartilage from the ear and use it to reconstruct the nose, you will call it a composite graft. So for you technically skin grafting is something that is very important from both practical point of view and also from exam point of view. So we will be detailing on skin grafting. History of skin grafting is very interesting. First skin grafting was done by, uh, in a sheep by Professor Bolirio. However, in humans, it is done by Sir Astley Cooper in 1817. What he did was he received an amputated thumb and he removed the thick, full thickness skin from the thumb and used it and applied it over the stump to cover the wound. So technically he did the first full thickness graft from the amputated stump to cover the from the amputated thumb to cover the amputated stump. You have to remember two surgeons, Professor Thiersch and Professor Wolf, because the name of split thickness graft goes by his name. Thin split thickness graft is also called Thiersch graft and full thickness graft goes by the name Wolf graft because Thiersch was the first who advocated using large sheets of dermoepidermic grafts and he said it's very important to retain dermis. So it's known as a Thiersch graft. And full thickness graft and how to use it for ectopian was described in detail by Wolf and hence it's called the Wolf graft. So now when we talk about skin we need to know basic anatomy of the skin. So you have epidermis as the outermost covering of the skin. So epidermis has got layers to which we will come in detail. Dermis is beneath the epidermis. Dermoepidermal junction is their connection. 
Hypodermis is the part beneath the dermis and they rest on, rest on subcutaneous tissue. So most of the appendages arise from the dermis and go out from the epidermis. So when we talk about thickness of the graft, we decide on whether you are going to take very very thin epidermal sheets or you are going to involve dermis which is more common. And based on the thickness of dermis that you are going to involve, you are going to have various thickness of the skin grafts. So when we talk about anatomy of epidermis, there are various layers. Stay, there is a nickname for it, big ship got lost completely. So from beneath upwards, you have stratum basal, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum, stratum corneum and just above are the dry flakes that we keep shedding every day. Beneath epidermis is the dermis.